Hey Trappers, Dale Billingsley here, Billingsley Brand Lures. So before we get started today, I just want to take a moment and, and remind everybody of the reason that we have today. Uh, you know, today being Memorial Day, I just want everybody to stop and, th and, and maybe stop and give thanks for today. Uh, you know, thank our veterans, past, present, possibly future. Uh, you know, without them, we wouldn't have today. And, uh, you know, that's the one thing I am very proud of my country. I'm very, very, uh, you know, buy American when you can. Uh, you know, they're, shoot, they're my favorite people. So uh, just stop and, and give thanks today, guys, and, uh, and realize that why we're here and, and uh, why we have today. It's not just another day off. It's just not a, a three-day weekend for you. So anyway, if you do that for me, I'd sure appreciate it. Also, if you haven't, as of always, if you haven't yet, if you would please hit that thumbs up for me, hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell. Share this video for me. Uh, maybe you want to take a minute and go back and look at some of my previous videos that I've put out. Maybe there's some information in there that you're looking for too. I've put out a lot of good information over the past year or so. So uh, maybe you want to go back and take a look at some of that older stuff and see if there's something in there you can use. Uh, okay, let's jump off into this. We are going to talk about gray fox today. Gray fox are probably one of my one of my all-time favorite animals to catch. I absolutely love a gray fox. I love everything about them. Uh, some of the things that uh, you want to look for when you're gray fox trapping. My rule of thumb. And this is just me. My rule of thumb is to is to cat trap my grays. Wherever the cats are going to be hanging out, that's where the grays are going to be too. So try to look for those places that have what I call rabbitat. Uh, any place where the where the birds and the mice and the rabbits and the small game, the quail and and the, you know the small game birds like pheasants and stuff are going to be, that's where you're going to find your grays. Any trails going through the timber. And when I mean trail, I mean actual logging roads, actually, and, and, and uh, fire access lanes. Uh, those are really, really good for gray fox locations to look for. Uh, I, don't, I don't catch a lot of grays. I'm not gonna claim that I do. I have caught several over the years, but I don't have a lot of grays in my country. Uh, like some of y'all do say down south, or, or even out west or even up north in the northeast especially i know there's a tremendous amount of grays up in that country uh, i don't have the luxury of, of having a high population of grays i sure wish i did because man like i said i sure do like seeing them and i do like to catch them so with that all being said let's uh let's jump right off and do this thing all right guys so what we've got here is our basic dirt hole set uh it's not anything fancy other than it is trenched out a little bit deeper but a little bit closer than what you would normally see me do a trench set do for say strictly coyotes or bobcats dirt holes dug in here to 45 no wider than what my trap jaws are bed is no wider than what my trap jaws are for a trap i prefer for grays if i'm targeting grays and bobcats both i prefer the number two Today we're just bringing out the old one and a half Duke coil spring. We're running about a oh, pound and a half, two pounds of pan tension on it. That's your basic gray fox trap. If I were targeting a lot of grays and after them heavy, I would suggest this trap be laminated and I also would maybe suggest it be double jaw. Uh, Gray fox are really bad about fighting a the trap. They tear their feet up pretty bad with them. And they're bad about self-mutilation as well. So uh, probably actually as bad as, as a sow coon or a young coon or may, you know, maybe even a little bit worse. Uh, so you know, that's just some things that you might want to check into, you know, depending upon your situation where you're at as to what you want to do as far as for modifications. Um, trap isn't four coil it's just two coil trap just basically standard equipment other than with the exception of the split ring on the end of the chain to attach my disposable stakes to uh, the biggest thing about grays is the guiding and the backing 
okay now I prefer to use a cedar limb if I'm here in the Midwest if I'm down south trapping I prefer a pine limb and I want it vertical I want it straight up and down grays are notorious about standing on a backing such as a rock you know such as a rock like this they they'll stand right on that thing same way with your side guiding they'll stand right on the guiding if you don't have something vertical to force them around uh, they're terrible about it so anyway we'll get into this a little bit we'll go ahead and set our trap here Okay, now you can see that pan is way too high. So, to adjust that, we just take our pair of pliers and we bend back there at the dog where the dog connects to the frame and just bend that forward a little bit. And then you can see now that pan's laid down there pretty level. That's very important. Uh, if you're running, say, number threes only, like I do a lot, um, what I would do there is, of course, lighten up the pan tension a little bit, but also bury that big trap just a little bit deeper with a little more covering over it to kind of slow it down and put a little more dirt between his pad and the pan so that you don't make such a deep catch on that little gray. I've caught them poor little devils clear up there, you know, to their forearm. Nobody likes to see that. Nobody wants that. So bury it a little deeper, put a little more covering over it than what you normally would to allow for that. Also, the other thing you can do with that, if you, if you choose to use threes, is raise the pan up a little higher so that it fires a little sooner. Again, we go back to timing a trap. If you saw that video or if not, go back and watch that video. How to time a trap to where it goes off where, where it should. So raise that pan up a little bit, and then when it fires, his foot won't be as far down in there. See what I'm saying? His foot won't be as far in there. You'll catch him across the toes and the pad like you should. <coughs> Sorry, just swallowed a gnat. So, <coughs> we place our trap in there, and we need to be back. <coughs> Dad, gum it. We need to be back there. Get that thing out of the way. Get it laid down. And there where it goes. We're back. Oh, we're only back about four to five inches from the edge of our dirt hole to pan center. Okay, grays will work a set a lot harder than what a red fox will. They are very aggressive when they work a set. What we would do then is go in here and bed the trap in good and solid like we normally would. But for guiding, we would put place a stick here along the dog side of the trap. We would place another stick here along the loose jaw. And then if you wanted to, you could take a smaller size stick and put it up here ahead of the lever. Now, John Ein and Bill Nelson were famous for doing this. That kept that gray centered up where he needed to be. You can also do this on your coyotes, your red fox, your cats. It does not hurt a thing. It keeps them more centered up to the pan and where you need them. If you don't like it, lose one of them. Lose the one off the loose jaw side, <coughs> but keep the one at the dog and keep the one in front of the trap at the lever. Keeps that animal centered up more. Those are very important things, and especially with dealing with, dealing with grays. Now again, <coughs> bad gummit, I can't get him coughed up. Maybe I did there. You also want to try to put some kind of guiding here and here on the sides of your dirt hole maybe, especially if you're using a big hole like this. Now, if you're using that Mickey Mouse wobble hole that you made with your driver or with a rebar stake, probably not necessary. 
I like to make a, a dirt hole look as natural as I possibly can. So mine are a little bigger and a little flashier than what most guys are. But again, the biggest thing is, is to keep those guides in a vertical position so that that gray fox cannot stand on them. Because if you give him a chance, he dang sure will. So uh, that would be that. That would be the the deal there. Let me swing that camera around here, and I'll show you exactly what I what I got going on. All right, you can you can see our guides there, guys. You can see the backing there is that old autumn olive branch. Like I said, I prefer something a little bit brushier than what that is. Just don't have any cedar trees right here where I'm at. And where there were is notoriously known for co or for copperhead snakes, and I really don't feel like fighting a copperhead for a damn cedar limb today. So we'll just go with what we got. So anyway, that would be the set once it was completely covered with a pan cover and, and everything of that sort. All right, guys, that was, a, that was a pretty good little video there. It was kind of quick, but I believe there was some pretty good information in it for you if you choose to use it. Uh, once again, I want to thank each and every one of you for stopping by and tuning in. I surely do appreciate it. Uh, once again, this is Dale Billingsley with another one. Signing out.